Having introduced alpha, I can introduce a very important concept in room acoustics, which is the reverberation time. Um, if you're in a, in a room that is perfectly silent and you switch on a, a sound source, well, you may not be aware of it, but it takes a certain time for the room to be filled with sound and for the sound level to become stabilized in the room. In fact, your acoustic source keep on putting energy into the room, but there is some energy dissipated at the wall and leaving uh, the room, so that at a certain time you get a balance between uh, the inflow of energy coming from the source and what goes out of the room, and we have a stable level. Uh, this is called the build-up phase, and then we have a stability phase. Then imagine that you suddenly uh, suppress uh, the source. Uh, the sound level will decrease very quickly, but it will not go to zero uh, immediately. And we have an extinction phase, which is symmetrical somehow to the build-up phase, where the sound level will exponentially decay. If we look at that phase uh, on a log scale, a logarithmic scale uh, for the time, we see, and on the logarithmic scale for the sound pressure uh, level, we see that uh, there is roughly a linear decay of the sound pressure level after the source has been turned off. And we call the reverberation time the time it takes for the sound pressure level to be reduced by 60 decibel. And this time is characteristic of the room and characteristic of the uh, material covering uh, the room. Uh, in fact, this is not uh, a constant coefficient. The absorption changes from frequency to frequency, and so the reverberation time is also a function of frequency, as you can see on that waterfall diagram in the different frequency bands. The, the sound pressure level does not decrease at the same uh, rate, and so we have, in fact, different reverberation times. In the uh, late 19th century, um, Wallace Sabin, uh, a French, uh, an American acoustician, um, came up with a very simple formula for calculating the reverberation time. Uh, the reverberation time, according to Sabin, in SI unit is given by a coefficient, 0.16, times the volume of the room in cubic meter divided by the absorption area of the room. What is the absorption area? You have to consider absolutely each and every surface in this room and instead of just adding the surfaces together, you multiply each surface by its absorption coefficients so that a perfectly absorbing a uh, room will count fully, and a surface that is perfectly reflecting will not count at all in the absorption area. And if you calculate 0 0.16 times the volume divided by that absorption area, you get the reverberation time. And you can find uh, codes that, uh, and programs that do that for you, that contains a vast database of material with their alpha value and that is able to uh, calculate if you give them the area of the different surfaces and the material covering these surfaces it is able to calculate the reverberation time uh, of uh, Sabine. Um, it may be a good time to introduce uh, the three classical acoustic test rooms that are used in acoustic uh, labs. Uh, the first type of room is a reverberant room. It's the room where you try to reduce as much as possible the absorption. So it is built of... Uh, uh, it, the, the, the walls are covered uh, with a material that is as reflecting as possible, ideally close to, to zero. The surfaces are non-parallel, so as to avoid uh, the development of resonances, as we'll see in next chapters, and uh, the room is usually quite large to maximize the, the reverberation time. In theory, in such a room, the reverberation time would be uh, infinite, 
in practice we reach a reson um, reverberation time of about 15 up to 20 um, seconds. Uh, just the opposite is the anechoic uh, room. An anechoic room is a room where that is covered, where the walls are covered with uh, wedges made of very absorbing material. So, at, on the one hand, you multiply, you increase the surface of the room, and the surface counts very much because the alpha value is very close to one. So, you end up with a very small reverberation time. Basically, the sounds. Uh, 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 just goes from the source to the wall and doesn't reflect and disappear at the wall. In uh, the transportation industry, we use a third type of room, which is called semi-anechoic room, and that represents more or less the behavior uh, on a road, which is reflecting, but taking into account that uh, there is no reflection in the other uh, direction. So they are made of a rigid ground, reflecting ground, but uh, all the other surfaces are as perfectly absorbing as possible. The reverberant room provides an easy way to measure the absorption coefficient of uh, a material. This is how it works. We start from a reverberant chamber with nothing on the ground, nothing uh, on the wall, and we measure its reverberation time. This, we know from Sabine Law that this reverberation time is equal to 0.16 times the volume divided by the average absorption coefficient of the room times the surface of the room. And so from that measurement we get the value of the average absorption factor of the, of the room, which is very small, but which we want to take into account. And then, as shown in the picture, you place a sample, preferably a large sample of material on the ground, and you re-measure the reverberation time. And now, you know from Sabine Law that the reverberation time is 0.16 times the volume, which hasn't changed divided by the alpha r coefficient we have obtained from the first measurements, which applies to the surface of the room minus the surface of the sample, plus the unknown absorption coefficient of the sample times the surface of the sample. And this measurement, because we know all the factors except alpha s, gives us the absorption coefficient of the sample. Again, it's not because you have the absorption coefficient that you know the impedance of the material. For measuring the impedance of the material, you need to use another device that is called a Kunz tube uh, that I'm not going to discuss here. You have a full description in the book if you're interested in that topic.